Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Research Upscaling Workshop organized by the Department of English and Foreign Languages, SRM Institute, Institute of Science and Technology, Ramapuram. It's with great honor that I introduce Dr. Uttam Jadav, an esteemed ac academician and visionary leader in the field of education. Dr. Jadav currently serves as serves as an associate professor and dean of the School of Liberal Arts at Sanjay Godavat University, Kolhapur, where he also holds the position of director for the Center of Advanced Learning and Teaching. He has presented numerous papers at national and international conferences, published extensively in journals. He has also published books, also translated, edited, and reviewed books. He also served as a resource person, keynote speaker, and session chair for various workshops and seminars. Dr. Jadav's illustrious career is marked by a multitude of achievements, including being the recipient of the Outstanding Academic Award in 2018 for his remarkable contributions to teaching, pedagogy, and research at Sanjay Godavat University. His dedication to excellence has also been acknowledged through his consideration for the prestigious Dr. APG Abdul Kalam National Award. In addition to his academic roles, Dr. Jadav has also played pivotal leadership roles, including serving as chairman for NEP 2020 Implementation Committee and as Dean Academics at Sanjay Godavat University. He has been instrumental in design and implementation of innovative educational programs such as the disaster management course co-created with prestigious institutions under the going global grant of the British Council. Dr. Jadav's expertise extends beyond the confines of academia. He, as evidenced by his role as a as an NAC accreditation advisor and gender and disability auditor for various educational institutions. We are so fortunate to have uh, Dr. Uttam Jadav with us today. We welcome you, sir. Yeah, thank you so very much. I think I am audible. Uh, yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate and thank you, uh, SRM uh, Institute of Technology, Ramapuram campus, and uh, Sumati Madam and her team. And at the same time, I apologize for not joining in time because I had some meeting which was scheduled uh, urgently and therefore I had to be with uh, the higher authorities and therefore still I'm traveling and I have you know identified a place from where I can address to you all. Uh, I heard that this is the fourth day and you have gone through numerous uh, ideas about research methodology and uh, how research is to be planned and carried out. And today I'm going to discuss with you about research methodology and research design. So if I start with uh, what could be the session outcomes of this workshop, uh, I'm thinking uh, some of you can, can contribute in identifying what could be the session outcomes of this workshop. And as many of you have joined through WhatsApp, sorry, uh, YouTube link, it may not be possible for all of you to respond. However, uh, let me make your job easier by uh, telling you what could be the outcomes of this session. Number one, we are going to see uh, what are the elements of a research process how research methods and research methodology are different and how to design effective research plan or design so that we'll be able to attain the stated hypothesis at the beginning of your research journey. Maybe a research paper or maybe a research project or maybe a PhD thesis as you know that you need to formulate objectives you need to identify what could be the outcomes of your research and simultaneously you also plan uh, what are the uh, hypotheses of your research and to do this all to carry a successful research you need to have a very effective research design and in this session we are going to see how to draft 
a very good research design. So at the end of this session, you will be able to compare a research designs, understand how to design your research effectively, what is its place and what it includes when I say research design. So if you look at the, the definition of research, you might have gone through uh, some of the definitions because this is a day four and I hope numerous scholars before me must have uh, acquainted you and being research students, research scholars and faculty members, I'm sure you are all very much aware of research and how uh, it is defined. So if you look at the Advanced Learner's Dictionary of Current English, it defines research as a careful investigation or inquiry, especially through search for new facts in any branch of knowledge. So the main objective of research is to carefully investigate something. In ter terms of research in science, it could be done through experiments. In terms of research in language, that could be done through surveys and questionnaire and analysis of data gathered. In terms of research in literature, this could be interpretation and analysis of numerous literary texts. However, in all these cases, there is a careful investigation or inquiry. And this is done through, uh, you know, search for new facts, any branch of knowledge. So the basic tenet of research is to add something to the existing knowledge of any field. So if your research is able to add few lines, few statements, few theories or few arguments, which are of your own, which have come out of a careful investigation and inquiry, your research is good and you should go for research. So while you design your research proposal for PhD, or while you apply for any research grant, or if you are writing a research paper, always keep in mind that there should be something new which you are adding to the existing corpus or knowledge of your specific area. And many of the times when I see research scholars, specifically PhD research scholars at the early stage of their PhD, they are not able to identify a research topic. They are not able to identify what could be the research outcomes and objectives. And therefore, they start with something and it becomes very much difficult for them because their hypothesis is not specially designed. Their objectives are not stated clearly and their methodology is unclear. And therefore, they face a lot of problems and their research becomes too lengthy that they are not able to complete in a specified time which is given to them. And in order to avoid, avoid all this, um, a, a line of advice would be to have a careful investigation of something which is not in ex existence or which does not exist. Now the argument may come if something which is not exist how I can invent that? There can be numerous types of research. I think you must have gone through uh, previous three days uh, wherein you need to compare some part with something. You need to uh, apply some part. You need to do some experiments in different types of research. And in that way, even comparing something and identifying which is which one is better, you are, you know, in fact, adding something to the process of or the, the, the knowledge of uh, uh, branch wherein you are working. So you know that research is an original contribution to the existing stock of knowledge marking or making for its advancement. So Einstein, I remember somewhere 
uh, said that uh, I could see the world uh, because I am standing on the shoulders of those who work earlier to me, so that I can stand on their shoulders and I can see the world in a more better way. Therefore, you know, as your predecessors have done some work in the, in the, the domain area or branch of knowledge where you are working, it is now your responsibility to add something to this uh, knowledge uh, through, through a scientific process which is called as research. And you know that uh, what Redman and Mori, they defined research as a systematized effort to gain new knowledge. Uh, this is uh, done through a systematic scientific process called research methodology. And research design is one important component of it. The search for knowledge through objective and systematic method of finding solution to a problem is research. And we have discussed this uh, to, to a length, which is, you know, quite sufficient at this stage. Now, having been discussed what is research and having made it clear that uh, our basic aim is to add something to the existing knowledge. Let us now go a step ahead and understand how to do this. Because as I told you, research is a scientific process. It includes several elements and these elements are to be taken care of. And if you go scientifically with this method, uh, to one method, uh, there are chances that your research, uh, you know, must get uh, satisfactory value. So to begin with, there are eight steps you can see. Number one is define the research problem, or select a topic for research. Now this is a crucial stage in doing any kind of research. Now research topic may be given to you by your supervisor. Most of the times it is expected that research topic should come out through uh, industry specifically. If you are doing uh, industry oriented research. In science, you can get these topics through review of literature. Or you can get some topics which are given by the uh, the agencies and through this you can uh, define the research problem. Now you might have gone through the the, the model of uh, funnel wherein you think of a research topic at a general level and then you come to a specific level. Now uh, while you define the research problem you need to consider several aspects like you need to be uh, uh, careful about how you design your research problem because this is the crux of your uh, entire research. So if your topic is too generalized, you may not be able to complete that research in a specific time. For example, if my topic for research in general I say uh, is uh, say pollution in India. Now, pollution in India is too generalized, too basic, and you cannot identify uh, which type of pollution you are going to study. Uh, let us say air pollution in India. Uh, again, you have to specify which part of India you are going to investigate or do study on air pollution. Now you can specify it by saying, say for example, air pollution in uh, Tamil Nadu state. Now again, you have to, you know, make it more specific, which geographical area. Now say for example, any uh, geographical area like, uh, say for example, Ramapuram uh, campus area or uh, that specific district or that specific tehsil. Now you know there are different reasons of air pollution. Now which reason are you going to consider and study? For example, maybe 
uh, industrial air pollution in Ramapuram district or something. I am not aware of uh, the, the geographical location of the district where you are situated. However, uh, I hope you are uh, understanding what I mean to say. So, for example, if I'm talking about um, air pollution in uh, uh, Maharashtra, I can come to a specific location, air pollution in, uh, say, for example, Shirol Tashi. Now, air pollution has its adverse effects on different areas. So I can say uh, effects of air pollution on, uh, say, for example, uh, uh, horticulture in uh, Shirol Tehsil, a small Tehsil in Kolapur district, Maharashtra, where I'm located now. So I, I think you are getting the point which I'm trying to explore here, that your research topic or your research problem should be defined in such a way that it should be able to give a very crystal clear idea of what you're go going to do in your research. For example, uh, I have come across some research scholars when they come and they say, uh, sir, I would like to do something in eco-criticism. And then they say, my research topic is eco-criticism in Indian, Indian English literature. Now, you might agree with me that Indian English literature is so vast that you cannot, you know, state exactly what you're going to do. Are you going to study eco-criticism in novels? Are you going to study eco-criticism in poetry? Are you going to study eco-criticism in some other form of literature? And therefore, you must define your problem in such a way that it should be able to guide you and the, the externals who are not directly involved in your research process should be able to identify what you are going to do through your research problem. Once you are able to draft a research problem, uh, you can familiarize yourself with existing research on the topic and you can do this through your literature. I am of the opinion that even you, even before you define the, the research problem, uh, you should be able to read uh, voraciously about the material which is uh, in existence, both in print and electronic media, so that you'll be getting an idea where the, the direction of research in your specific area is going on. So review of literature uh, is, is crucial not just to make you familiarize yourself with existing research on the topic. However, it will be extremely helpful for you to refine your research topic or to refine your research problem. So you just have don't have to, you know, uh, draft your research problem. You have to redraft it uh, once you get crystal clear idea of what has happened in the domain wherein you want to work, what is happening in the domain where you, you, you want to work, and what could be the possible topics, what could be the possible arguments in the area where you are interested to work. This picture only uh, will be clear once you have a thorough review of literature. And there are several techniques and ICT tools to do this or to conduct this review of literature. And I'm going to explore some of these techniques tomorrow in the topic ICT for research. For example, uh, tools like viewers viewer, which will be able to give you a domain-wise, region-wise, Topic-wise, groups are the agencies or research groups which are doing research in specific area. For example, if I just put a keyword called eco-criticism in literature, and as per my requirements, I can search 
who has done research in eco criticism in literature in the world so i'll be able to see this through a scattered diagram where i can identify yes this is the geographical location where this research has happened i can go with keywords like who are the best researchers in eco criticism in literature i'll be able to see their research papers and i'll be able to see uh, eco criticism in literature explored by different research scholars in different countries so that i can identify and make my generalizations and statements so that it will be easier for me to identify these research papers and articles and books and i can go through and i can build my own corpus of these books articles which are useful for my review of literature review of literature not only helps us at the beginning it helps us to formulate a theoretical background to to to, uh, to our study so through research on review of literature you not only research what is happened what has already happened what is happening and what is going to happen you also think of what is the advancement in the theory which i am going to apply to my research in our example what is the status of eco criticism and literature what are the recent trends in analyzing to criticism in literature who are the the, the proponents of this theory called eco criticism and what is their argument and based on this you can design your own research framework which is the next stage that is designing or selecting a research design and to do this you need to choose one or more research methods experiments surveys observation use of existing resources and with the help of this you can build a very good research design now once you build your research design of course we are going to focus more on this in coming slides you need to formulate a research hypothesis what do you intend to test what is the relationship among the variables like uh, what you predict could be the the answer to the problem which you have raised and at the end of your research you verify whether your hypothesis is tested positive or negative null and you can then conclude your work based on hypothesis in most of the cases wherein you are analyzing texts um, most of the scholars and supervisors also they don't formulate uh, hypothesis however they set objectives of the study and they try to meet these objectives at the end of this the, the research which is of high importance because stating objectives you know gives us a direction how we have to work in which direction what is the purpose or focus of this thesis or research for example you can state the, the uh, following are the objectives of this study like to identify compare and contrast to analyze this way wherein we use bloom's taxonomy uh, you should be able to use such verbs so that your entire thesis your entire research uh, will be in a direction and therefore once you formulate hypothesis once you state your objectives and out outcomes which are expected at the end of this study and once you are research methodology is ready you carry out the research by collecting data record or information in scientific research 
you do experiments in labs and in linguistic study most of the times you collect data through observations and questionnaire for example if you are going to study the effect of some techniques of effective teaching of english language you collect data you gather data from uh, the, the learners you record their audios and videos and then you conduct several interviews you take several surveys and out of this you you know formulate the data and once you do this all once you carry out your research you interpret your results and in terms of research in literature um, when you are analyzing something uh, you know most of the times you need not have to collect the data however you have to interpret analyze compare and contrast different texts in that way you carry your research and once you do this or you interpret your results work out the implications of the data you collect and you try to you know conclude your research you try to uh, bring out the the relationship between uh, variables relationship between characters their impact on something you do this through analysis and interpretation of your results and this once done you report to the research findings what is their significance how do they relate to the previous findings this is what you relate it with review of literature earlier even before you started doing research you have come to know that these are the research areas these are the gaps in existing literature and you clean that we have identified these gaps and we have worked on it what is its significance what value you are adding to the research which is available and therefore you know reporting your research findings is essential and as i told you at the beginning of this session that if there is no research value like if you are not able to add something to the existing knowledge your research is futile it is just a collection of facts and publishing it and most of the research papers present in different conferences published in different predatory journals are the result of you know not having a concrete research plan so once you report these observations your findings are registered and discussed in the wider academic community leading perhaps to the initiation of further research which can be possible uh, if your research is of uh, high value so this is what the steps involved in the research process are and if i summarize it you can see on the screen choosing a topic taking review of literature formulating the problem which is nothing but identifying gaps in existing research and trying to fulfill or complete those gaps and then developing a research question choosing and organizing the research design gathering the data analyzing it interpreting it and communicate communicating the findings now comes roll up research methods because you need to design your own research methodology and when i was teaching this to you you know post graduate msc students there is a confusion amongst them whether research methods and research methodology is one and same or are they different so research methods are the methods and techniques that are used for conduction of research and they refer to the methods the researchers use in performing research operations and all those research methods which are used by the researchers during the course of studying his research problem are termed as research methods so 
any method which you which you use maybe observation analysis synthesis something like that and any method which you use uh, to do your research is a research method however research methodology is different and it is a way to systematically solve the research problem and it may be understood as a science of studying how research is done scientifically because uh, while i say research method i can choose any research method out of available methods however justification of it why i have chosen this specific research method is essential in research methodology and it has many dimensions and research methods can be a part of research methodology and it has a wider scope than that of research methods and this is the crux of research methodology that is we do not only talk of the research methods but also consider the logic behind the methods we use in the context of our research study and explain why we are using a particular method or technique and why we are not using others so the logic of choosing that specific research method is essential in research methodology a research methodology is a combination of all such research methods which are justifiable and which are very much essential to carry out your research in that specific domain and research methodology gives you assurance that that you have done this research if similar research methodology is used anywhere with the conditions explained in the research document you will probably get the same results or similar results so this is what research methodology and research method they are different why i am telling this to you because i have seen some research uh, papers research articles and phd thesis also wherein research methodology is very poor for example if i am doing research on masculinities or in you know studying how the the masculinities are constructed in indian english drama so constructing of masculinities some in some indian plays in english so i should i should have a thorough understanding of what is masculinity and how they are interpreted how they are analyzed and how different scholars like connell uh, butler and others they have put forth different theories of masculinities so by combining these all theories i must come to a conclusion how i am going to apply these theories in my own way so out of all the theories i will design my theoretical framework which will be my unique which i will be applying to do research in this specific area on this specific topic so as a researcher i must identify what could be the best research methodology to this specific research problem because i hope you have studied different types of research and each type of research has a different research methodology and i should be in a position to explain the logic behind applying a specific research method as a part of research methodology and this is very very essential nowadays because if you look at the research papers the stronger your research methodology and objectives and outcomes stated more better your research output will be more better your research paper will be 
and therefore this is highly essential in specifically in terms of research carried out on literature this is highly essential to have a solid research framework so research design so research design comprises decisions regarding what where when how much by what means concerning an inquiry of a research study constitute a research design so answer to these questions like what where how much by what means is a research design it may not be relevant to those who are doing research in literature however it is of high importance to those who do research in uh, i mean professional research or research on different projects wherein lot of money is involved time is essential so in this case i need to have my research design which which will explain everything like what i am going to uh, focus what i am going to do in my research where i am going to do this when i am going to do this what is what is the probable timeline to complete this research project how much of something is essential for example if i am doing doing research on uh, in in linguistics and identifying you know different responses by uh, learners for uh, different ict tools now i need to have either observations i need to have responses by these learners i need to have their um uh, opinions i need to have their uh, questionnaires field i can conduct surveys so this is called as a population in research specifically in social science research where in mean mode median and statistical techniques like chi square test i know what they are useful in such cases how much is very essential out of the set population how i am going to choose the responses so here comes your sample design so which sample design i am going to use like is it going to be a random sampling or is it going to be a stratified sampling or is it going to be a quota sampling or is it going to be a cluster sampling convenient sampling so which out of these sampling methods i'm going to use so that i'll be able to you know justify why a specific number of participants you have chosen has there been equal importance to all the sectors of your research population which you are studying so all these cases are to be considered while you design your research design which is very much essential to uh, the, the inquiry which you are going to do as a part of your research area so it is an arrangement of conditions for collection and analysis of data so for example you might have seen a uh, research on effect of covid-19 so there is you know huge amount of data gathered in terms of primary health cares and their reports covid centers reports out of these you know thousand several hundred thousand lakhs of data which one are you going to use and how for example if you are doing research in uh, natural language processing or if your research is interdisciplinary involving computer science and language 
so data which is available on internet with different agencies out of that lakhs of entries which entries are we going to choose once you say x y z these many entries you are going to choose the question comes how do you select this what is the logic behind it and here comes your research design to your help because it gives thought to all these questions which could be raised in future so conditions are set for collection and analysis of data in a manner that aims to combine relevance to the research purpose and economy in procedure so in research design is a conceptual structure within which research is conducted this is a skeleton a conceptual structure within which you conduct research and it constitutes the blueprint of the collection measurement and analysis of data this is is highly essential this is the blueprint of how you are going to collect the data how you are going to measure it and how you are going to analyze this data if this is decided prior before even you go for collecting the data it will be of high importance to you as a researcher and therefore research design is essential now if i look at the research design why it is uh, done and conducted uh, this is the means of obtaining the information number one availability and the skills of the researchers and his or her staff if you require specifically this is relevant to the surveys which are conducted is my staff able to uh, you know ask proper questions is my staff able to use spss software that is that is statistical packages package for social science research and interpret its results this is essential i need to check the ability of my staff and myself if i am able to have those skills which are required this comes under research design explanation of the way in which selected means of obtaining information will be organized this will be explained here and reasoning leading to the selection why you have selected this the time available for research is also considered and the cost factor relating to research that is finance available for the research purpose all these are included in research design and you prepare your research design so research design normally consist of following questions like what is the study about what this study is about why is the study being made you need to identify the answers to these questions like what is the study about what exactly are you going to do in this research and then why this study is being made uh, what is its importance how will it add value to the existing knowledge in the specific area where you are working or doing research so why the study being made where will the study be carried out like locations if they are there where the study will be carried out again in specific areas like geography uh, social and political uh, elements do affect your research findings and therefore you need to identify the the uh, place where you are going to do this study what type of data is required for this study like uh, is it the data which is relevant to certain sections of the society what is the type of data which you are going to work on where can the required data be found like as i told you uh, say for example uh, effect of covid 19 on 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 loneliness amongst uh, uh, adolescents now in this case you need to identify where 
and what kind of data you are going to use or you aim for and where this data can be found. Specifically, this is a very essential question when you are using convenience sampling. For example, if you are doing research on cancer patients or HIV infected uh, patients, then this is very essential for you to identify from where the required data can be accessed, from where the required data can be obtained. For example, as I told you, uh, a large amount of data is available on internet on, uh, you know, uh, this is this is primary data or raw data, which we call it as the, uh, the, the natural language or uh, uh, the, the audio recordings of uh, uh, samples of different dialects. So if you are going to do research on these audio samples or natural language language processing, you need to identify where uh, this data can be obtained from. And there uh, you can decide whether you'll be allowed to use this data with specific permissions from uh, that specific department from government of India. So in this case, this is essential to identify where this data can be obtained from. What periods of time will the study include? Because uh, everything you cannot do alone. Uh, you need to have deadline to that work which you are carrying out. And therefore, you need to identify the period of time uh, which you you know, want to include in your study, like uh, from from data from this point to this point. If you are using a longitudinal study, you need to uh, make it clear uh, how many observations, are from uh, how many uh, time frame are you going to obtain, and you need to clearly state. The period of sub periods of time, uh, the study which you want to do shall include. What will be the sample design? As I told you, how you are going to collect data, how you are going to interpret it, from which sources, and why you are using that specific method of collection and interpretation of data. Which software are you going to use to interpret your results? All this. Uh, need to be uh, thought over in sample design. What techniques of data collection will be used, like how you are going to collect data, techniques of data collection, how will the data be analyzed, like you simply state there that uh, this software you will be used to interpret this data. Data will be compared on different parameters like this, number one, number two, number three, like this. You need to state it clearly in sample your research design, how you are going to analyze the data. And the last one in this case is in what style will the report be prepared? Are you going to uh, prepare your report in, in cause and effect or experiments and the results? What will be the style of your report writing? This all needs to be uh, recorded in uh, your research design. So here uh, I have given some uh, slides about sample design. And uh, I hope you must be going through this uh, in future sessions. One. 
so uh, i hope uh, you must be going through this however just as a glimpse i'm i'm showing this to you that uh, these are the research elements or, or, or elements of a research process and determining sample design is essential in this and then uh, as we have discussed that sample design is a framework or road map that serves as the basis for the selection of a survey sample and affects many other important aspects of survey as well so there are uh, two elements which are involved in sample design one is sampling method which sampling method out of the uh, methods explained below in few slides you are going to use and how you are going to use estimate estimation process for calculating the sample statistics different sample methods may use different estimators like you need to uh, put it there in the sample design so population sample and sampling population as you know is the collection of elements which has some of the other characteristics in common number of elements in the population is the size of the population and out of this you select sample sample is nothing but the subset of population and the process of selecting the sample is known as sampling number of elements in the sample is the sample size so in this case uh, the data which you are going to collect from learners while you study use of effective ict teaching techniques and their effects on learner retention or something like this the population is uh the the uh number of uh, people whom you are going to study and out of this sample will be selected for interpretation so sampling population and then sample so there are two types of sampling one is probability sampling another one is non probability sampling so probability you can see here can be uh, each item can have equal opportunity to get selected however in non probability probability sampling uh, there are patterns set so in probability sampling you have simple random sampling stratified sampling systematic sampling cluster sampling and multi stage sampling so a simple random sampling every element has an equal chance to get selected so random selection of 20 students from class of 50 is its example stratified sampling so you divide the elements of population into different stratas which are called as subgroups and then based on their similarity in such a way that elements within the group are homogeneous and heterogeneous among the other subgroups form and then you select elements randomly selected from each strata so strata 1 strata 2 strata 3 out of these three stratas you randomly select elements however these stratas are segregated or designed based on homogeneity or heterogeneity of the data this is cluster sampling and this example is a single stage cluster sampling so in this case the entire population is divided into, into clusters or sections and then clusters are randomly selected like cluster 1 cluster 2 cluster 3 like this all the elements of cluster are used for sampling and clusters are identified using details such as age sex location etc in two stage cluster sampling different clusters are identified randomly selected and through this selected clusters also you select samples randomly 
so this is two stage cluster sampling method and in multi stage sampling method you create clusters you create strata and then you select ran items randomly so here in the example you can see out of the population population is selected into clusters divided into clusters these clusters are again divided into strata or spectrums and out of these spectrums or strata items are selected randomly so you can see this multi stage sampling method in non probability sampling method you have a uh, different types and this method does not rely on randomization as we have seen in we have seen in probability sampling methods and this technique is more reliant on the researcher's ability to select elements for a sample and this sample technique is also known as non random sampling method because we do not select elements randomly so there are four types number one is convenient sampling number two is purposive sampling number three is quota sampling and number four is referral referral or snowball sampling so convenient sampling uh, researcher prefer this during the initial stages of survey research as it is quick and easy to deliver results so here sample are selected based on the availability something which is easily available for you can be selected and this can be done for pre uh, research because uh, this will be easily available for you and in cases when sample is costly sample is not easily available in this case you select convenient sampling in purpose of sampling this is based on the intention or purpose of the study and only elements will be selected from the population which suits the best for the purpose of our study so you can see here if we want to understand the thought process of the people who are interested in pursuing master degree then the selection criteria would be are you interested in doing masters so uh, the, the purpose of your study is kept in mind and in the initial stage itself if you feel that the population or the element of population who is filling this form is not interested in the purpose which you are doing study for then in this case you can reject the sample so purpose of sampling quota sampling uh, this uh, type of data depends on pre set standard it select the representative sample from the population and say for example we reserve quota for example if our population has 45% females and 55% males then our sample should reflect the same percentage of males and females so if your population has 45% males so you must select you must select samples at least 45% from female category and 55% from male category this is you reserve quota for uh, different types of uh, population this is the referral or snowball sampling uh, this is used wherein uh, data is our population is completely unknown and rare and therefore we take help of the first element which is select for population and ask him to recommend other elements like one becomes three three becomes four four becomes six like this like a snowball or referral re reference we use to collect this um, sample so here you can have a comparison of this random sampling stratified volunteer sampling opportunity sampling these are elements of the sampling methods so this brings to the end of this presentation and i think it's one hour complete
thank you so much if you have any doubt you can ask me or else we'll we'll call it a day over to you hello hello uh yes sir like uh, oh, we are waiting for the comments from the youtube like yeah. uh yes sir there is a question sir so can you see the question sir in the comments comments uh so your audio is not audible ah uh, yeah it's not so in comment section in the 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 less where have, i have logged in uh yes sir uh, like i will read out the question if it is not visible for you can i uh, can yes. i write research paper by just doing data analysis on the basis qu basic questionnaire filled by the respondent and not by using any technical tools yeah this is a very good question and i appreciate this because uh, these types of uh, papers and studies can be carried out as a pre stage of your uh, major research okay and in this case it is very much uh, appropriate to just get responses from the um, different uh, population and interpret their results uh, um, by your own way but see that there should be something concrete which is coming out of this uh, 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 survey which should add something to the existing uh, knowledge so in this case uh, most of the times if you wish to give a uh, essence to your study uh, just you know collecting 100 participants data and interpreting it may not be sufficient to generalize the claims which you are making in your research paper but thought is good uh i think sir there is no other question sir like i think it, since it is late uh, i think almost everyone yeah. is kind of tired yeah yeah sir can we uh, can we yeah can we proceed to the water plan sir pardon uh, can we proceed to the vote of thanks who is going to deliver i don't know i know yes sir yes sir who here like i invite uh, esther my fellow research scholar to deliver the vote of thanks thank you for a thought provoking session sir uh, it is with immense gratitude that i extend our sincerest thanks to each and every one of you for gracing us with your presence and active participation in today's enlightening session focused on the significance of research design the sequential steps involved in the research process and the art of crafting a meticulous research design first and foremost i extend my heartfelt thanks to a distinguished speaker dr uttam jadhav for sharing your profound knowledge expertise and invaluable insights into the intricate art of crafting a research design your comprehensive guidance has undoubtedly enlightened and inspired all of us equipping us with the essential methods and principles necessary to navigate the complexities of research methodology with confidence and precision we are profoundly appreciative of your insightful presentation which has illuminated the critical role of research design in shaping the trajectory and credibility of academic and professional research endeavors your lucid explanations and illustrative examples 
have undoubtedly broadened our understanding and underscored the paramount importance of methodological rigor in research pursuits. As we bring today's session to a close, we are delighted to announce our anticipation for another enlightening session tomorrow. We eagerly look forward to delving into the transformative realm of utilizing ICT tools in research, uh, ICT in research. Once again, thank you, sir, for your outstanding contribution to today's session. Yeah, thank you so much. And apologies from my side uh, once again. So we'll have a wonderful session tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yes, feedback link will be posted uh, just in one minute. The feedback link will be posted. It will be posted in the YouTube comment box.